Thank you for joining us today and congratulations on receiving the highest honor from MRS, the Von Hippel Award. Thank you very much. I'm very, I'm very honored. Extremely honored. Your award citation reads in part for pioneering work in engineering of musculoskeletal tissues. Let's start by talking a little bit about your work. How did you happen to focus on this particular aspect of material science? Well, my background is uh, that of uh, is, a is a twofold background. I'm uh, both a material science and a chemical engineer on one hand, but I'm also an orthopedic surgeon. And so um, my work has really tried to meld uh, my two worlds, that of, uh, of uh, musculoskeletal medicine and also in terms of um, new materials and new approaches to materials. Your award talk is going to focus on regenerative engineering, materials, and convergence. Give us a preview of what you will be discussing in your talk. Well, you know, the, the area of regenerative engineering is, um, is uh, a new field, and it's a field that I actually uh, termed. Um, the editors of Science Magazine came to me a, almost about a decade ago and said, listen, tell us about what your vision is in terms of how we can regenerate tissues better. And in a piece in Science Translational Medicine, I uh, wrote that the future is uh, in a new field called regenerative engineering. And regenerative engineering is the a, is a convergence of a number of different areas that didn't fit together before, but, but do now advanced material science, including nanotechnology, which I'll be focusing on in my talk, developmental biology, biophysics, stem cell science, and also clinical translation, patient factors such as immunology, et cetera, that, that bring this together. And so uh, my talk will be, t will be focused on uh, regenerative engineering, and, um, but also with, a, with a how biomaterials, in, including nanomaterials, can make um, a big difference in terms of our ability to be able to regenerate uh, complex tissues and, and, uh, and organ systems. There are actually three facets to your award citation. We've talked a little bit about your research. Let's talk about another aspect of your career. The citation reads, for extraordinary work in guiding technology and science policy. Tell us about the importance of the science voice in guiding public policy. Well, I, I think it's important that scientists um, um, not only pursue science, but also try to uh, push back the frontiers in terms of public policy and also in terms of social action. And so um, some, a lot of our, my work has actually been, been involved in terms of public policy work. I've served on the advisory committee to the director of NIH um, uh, and uh, was on the Blue Ribbon uh, group that, that reviewed the intramural program. The National Science Foundation served on the advisory committee to the um, to the uh, head of engineering at uh, at, uh, at the at the uh, National Science Foundation uh, I've been very involved in in, um, in the regulatory policy both from the standpoint of of working with organizations uh, such as American Academy of big surgeons uh, on on policy decisions but also working with the FDA I was on the uh, member of the permanent device uh, uh, panel uh, permanent member of the device panel for the FDA, but also was on the National Science Advisory Board for the FDA. And I think that um, it's important that, uh, that scientists and engineers not only work in science, but also help to frame and, 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 and guide the, uh, the future on the, in the policy realm in terms, of, uh, in terms of these areas. And lastly, the third aspect noted in your award citation is for promoting ethnic diversity and excellence in science. Tell us about your work in promoting diversity in science. Well, it's another facet of my work that's uh, very, very important to me. Um, I'm, I am the editor-in-chief of the journal Racial and Ethnic Health Disparities, which is now the leading journal in the country in the area. I know that for material science and orthopedic surgeon, um, it seems a bit of a departure, but uh, what work in that area. I founded a health policy institute that looks at uh, health policy issues involving uh, black people. And I'm a member of the National Academy of Medicine, a member of the National Academy of Engineering, and, and, and chair in, uh, a, a new roundtable on black men and black women in science, engineering, and medicine. How do we, how do we affect uh, uh, the lives of black people working in science, engineering, and medicine, especially in terms of increasing the numbers? So I've been very, very active in terms of, uh, in, in terms of the area of social justice. I'm very proud uh, uh, this year to win the, the Herbert W. Nickens Award from the American Association of Medical Colleges, recognizing my work in terms of social justice and, and racial and ethnic uh, equity. 
Um, it's a very important part of my, you know, the facet of my career and my life. Obviously, there is a long way to go in achieving true diversity in scientific research. What are some of the next steps that need to be taken on that journey? Well, I, I think uh, I just gave my speech at the, uh, the Nickens Award speech, and um, I actually outlined my vision for where we need to go as a society in terms of achieving um, true diversity and equity. And I call it the ideal pathway or the ideal path where IDEAL stands for inclusion, diversity, equity, anti-racism, and learning. And it's bringing together these different areas, uh, especially anti-racism and learning, um, that I think we can move forward as a society in uh, creating a better world. Thank you so much for your time today. Great, thanks so much.